Kusui, we have arrived. We have left best for last. The file Q3 is what we will call a happy middle ground of all of this mess of a shootout. As you can probably tell, it's my personal unit. My daily driver, actually. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't need you BTR5 now, so just hold it. Hold it. Hold it! Hold. Hold. You don't need to hold your gun. Drop. Drop your weapon and hold my. Don't fall off the stand. I didn't tell you to fall off the stand. Hold the BTR5. Hold it. Hold. Hold. There, 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 there we go. Don't speak to how many times I have dropped you. Okay? Okay. Cool. First, we have to talk about the ergonomics of the file Q3. That is very important. This is the form factor part. As I talk about a file Q5, it's a little bit too heavy with my phone together. So heavy that it might train myself to use it only one of my arm a little bit too strong and looks like I have to do something secretly in the sheets a little bit every, every day. Wait. Weightlifting a dumbbell, obviously. What the fuck are you thinking about? Jesus. And my computer battery's dying. Don't die on me. You don't want to die on me, otherwise you're gonna see me fucking rage. Ah, barely been an hour. Why have you died? Why are you dying? Why are you dying? Oh, hey, dead cockroach. Fuck you. Nobody likes you, cockroaches. Where was I at? As I talk about a Q5. It is way too heavy with my phone. If the file Q5 is sized like a 20,000 milliamps hour battery bank, this is sized more like a 5,000. It's a much more manageable size and weight compared to Q5S. Yeah, this thing weighs about 130 grams, which is a lot better than however heavy that was. Here's the thing, they will give you these wristbands. I strapped it vertically around the device. That way it doesn't slide around the back of my phone and doesn't scratch up the precious, precious paintwork. And I can clip things on it like a loop. And when you're when you're not using each of the wires and just clip them back on the back. Voila! Already ingenuity. Such a genius, am I? <laughs> I mean, this is a really nice feature that they probably didn't intend, but it works anyway. But you might realize that the 2.5 connector has been covered and that, that was intentional. Screw the 2.5. It breaks on a dime. I barely dropped it. I have a Ben 2.5 already. I hate 2.5. It's useless! Pentacon for the win, baby. Anyways, the control is much more intuitive compared to Q5S. Finding the right input on the Q5S might take a steeper learning curve then launch it in North Korea's nuclear missiles by hacking it from your 2006 home PC running the latest Pentium processor using the home IP address and your bandwidth basically jam-packed with six Netflix account, blasting American-centric high school drama, all that muscle. The Q3 offered a way more intuitive. You see this knob? You twist it, it's on. You twist it more, louder. You twist it less, quieter. Easy. And you connect it to your phone with the Type-C. You connect it. And the phone just prompts you say, hey. It's connected. Voila. Easy. And there's a button on the bottom for the game. You push it. It's on. There's a green light. No. Is there a green light? There isn't a green light, but pretend there's gonna be a green light. Why is it showing red? Why is it blinking red? Did I break it? Ah! Over here, down below, you have the charge switch. You, you flick it, you flick it, and start charging. Simple. There's a switch on the side as well. The switch over here. This is a joke switch. You see, you turn it on, you became a joke. Congratulations. Please turn it off. Never turn this on. This is actually a joke. This is a fucking joke. Not funny. I love the ergonomics on this. Everything is laid out in such a simple switch or button configuration. No navigating a barely visible screen or no screen at all. Have fun guessing which controls for the Q5S because I ain't doing it. 
and then let's talk about some of the features of the Q3. It supposedly is missing out on a Bluetooth functionality comparing to its big brother Q5, but I don't think so. I even I have YouTube. Uh, YouTube. Even if I have Bluetooth, I'm never gonna use it because it's just not as good. Even though it's LDAC, it's not gonna be as good. It still cannot handle 24 bits and <laughs> compression. <laughs> Ew! Ew, compression! I like it simple without Bluetooth. And the Q3 is exactly that. But now, it's presented with a problem. Now, what if you want to charge while music is playing? Let's actually simulate this environment. Let's actually simulate this environment. The Q3 only have one USB Type-C. Unlike the Q5, which have two USB micro, actually. One for charging, one for the music. But this only have one. So what happened if you want to charge your Q3 because it's out of battery and just wouldn't do anything? Simple, actually. You turn the battery suck button on. I don't think you can see it, but just pretend you can. Um, yes, now the file Q3 will be sucking your phone battery. I'm not joking, it's commit battery suck real fast. With the 10, 10 watt quick charging, it managed to empty 60% of this battery within 30 minutes. I'm not joking. So now we are facing another problem. Now your phone needs charging. So maybe you should stop listening to music right now? Do you think that's okay for an audio file? Now what you have to do is you have to break out your battery bank. Stop charging phone. And now. What you have to do is break out your totally, not a Q5, battery bank. And then you have to basically, oh my god, there's so many, so, so many wires. Uh, yeah, so um, yeah, basically, you have to first connect the 3.5 connector with a jumper wire. Oh, shut up. Oh no, the phone actually is running out of battery. Um, help? Um... Help! So, um, yeah, basically, you want your power bank. And, first, first of all, you get out your 3.5 to 3.5, the jumper wire, connect this to 3.5, and connect that 3.5 to your phone. Yes, this actually, this is an output and an input at the same time. Very smart design. And then after you've done that, you're basically using the phone stack, but using this as an app. So it's sort of, it's gonna sound a little bit worse, but you're charging and that's not easy. And then next you have to connect this wire, which is the charging cable from the file Q3 to your battery bank and then you take another charging cable and then you connect it to your phone, like so. And then you turn this on and then you realize that yes, finally, you can play your music and then the last step, connect your earphone in. And then at the end of the day, you will be ending up with something like this. Elegant. Yep. <laughs> Get, get the fuck out of here. Just, just, just have a separate fucking charging port and a fucking music port. I don't really give a sh**. The video is about to end. 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 <sighs> Stay together. That took a while. And then we are now moving on to the sound. The sound. There's seriously not much to talk about it. It sounds like a baby Q5. Slightly less sound staging. A little bit less. A little bit less separation. A little bit less output power but overall in a much slimmer and more attractive package. It is really surprising that the output power, power between this and the BTR5 is very similar. This is 300 milliwatts on the 32 ohms with the balance connection. It is 220, which is a little bit surprising to be honest. It means it can probably do the HD, not 600, the 660S or the 58X but I wouldn't try it, I wouldn't rely on it, I wouldn't depend on it. And the sound signature for this one, it sounds very much like the Q5. Very analytical, 
some might despise this and think the analytical sounding setup. I don't blame you because this sounds very cold comparing to some of the other decks. It is much recommended to pair this with a warmer IEM like my Yeti or the OH7 I tried the other day, and you get a gist of it. But I'm more than okay with the sound with this and my Blessing too. On the brink of it being very harsh, maybe you have to select like maybe a chord that's accordingly. And I had a silver chord from TRN, and it sounds like a needle poking into my eardrum. That's not right. The current chord I have is actually a uh, copper with silver plating. It works more than enough. It, but if you want a warmer experience with this setup, I would almost recommend a gold plated copper or maybe a buttery tune corn court to warm things up a little bit in this setup. And there's a lot of examples of the harshness that might come from this and this combined. <sighs> well, let me play a little bit of music. I think I'm only about to play 10 seconds of it before you two pull my pants down and ask me for my money. <laughs> So here we go, music. So yes, I could say that I purchased this after absolutely no consideration from any other brand, but I didn't. I did compare it to many, many other brand of Portable DAC amps. First thing, how can I not mention against the hip DAC from Iffy? I know it's IFI, but it's Iffy. <laughs> Iffy. Seriously, literally everybody who reviewed the Q3, I compared to both of them. Ergonomically, very similar. Sound wise, actually, I prefer the hip DAC any time of the day. It's a lot warmer, it's a lot harsher up top, and also it's a lot more powerful. 300? That thing is 400. It's so like a 25% increase. It's it, it's impressive. And I have, also have a separate connector for charging. Am I stupid for not buying a hip DAC? Yes and no. Hip DAC is perhaps objectively better buy. But there are a few problems. Two small ones. One massive one. First, hip DAC doesn't have 2.5, but there's one established. I hate them with all my passion, so that's fine. And second, where I'm at, I can snatch a Q3 secondhand for 30% discount as the IFI does not have that kind of discount because it's a lot less common to find it popping up the secondhand market. And then we have to move on to the big problem. It hisses. With anything that is a little bit e too easy to drive, anything that is high sensitivity, low impedance, it goes like... It's not joking. With my blessing too. That's too easy to drive. The extra power doesn't help. It creates a massive hiss. Audible any time of the day, even a chorus, even at moderate volume. It's not even funny. So at the end of the day, the iffy hip deck is like that cat. It's incredibly cute and you want to love, but it just hisses at you and threatens to break your face if you pick it up. With my blessing too, especially. The Q3 has some hissing as well, but it's negligible. It's much better control. It's like the clat is the the clat. It's like the cat is slightly less cute, but it actually loves you, more or less. It was your current setup. Yeah. And then I move on to Nano IDSD. It sounds great and goes well with my sensitive I am and with the power match thing. Actually, it's really good, but it looks like a fucking relic from the Stone Age. Pass. And the core mojo. Didn't get to try. Didn't find any place that actually sells them. But it doesn't have a balanced connection. I really want to try out a hipster connection. It doesn't pass. And a Q1 Mark II. But I didn't even know why they still created Q1 because they're selling the Q3, which is basically the same thing, next generation. I mean, they have a much, they had a much better. 28. Amplifier. And they have a Pentacon connector. I don't even get it. So yes, at the end of the day, Q3 is my selection. And the final thingy with my Q3. Before I actually wrap it up, I don't want to make it sound like it's a problem with the circuitry or it's... Because this is probably the only one I've exposed it to certain conditions. 
But a Q the Q3 has a s noticeable electrical noise. Like a... It sounds like Mr. Krabs is always dubbing over your music in the background. It happens very rarely. And I feel like that's an electromagnetic interference. I'm not sure if it's just a fluke or is it like special to my back, to this specific unit or the specific model. I really don't know anything. It is stupidly obvious over some other times. It is really audible when the Wi-Fi and 4G connection is weak. It's even more so when you turn just turn on the Wi-Fi or cellular. It started to search for network like a And it's absolutely out of control when you start using 5G. Oh man. I don't want to say this is a, this one's problem. The Field Q3's problem. As I haven't tried any other DAC under that similar kind of condition. But I just want to let you guys know this. If you have a clue to what the hell this is, please leave a comment below. Finally, we have arrived here. I, I actually am probably brain dead. We, have, we are now at the final verdict. This video is getting filthily long at this point, so let's make it quick. The Q5 is really good if you're using a high impedance IEM or an over ear if you don't decide to lug it around. I mean, I couldn't see why the Q5 would be attractive when the hit that can pro provide just as much power with a much slimmer design and the Mojo is, well, Needless to say, a honker of a powerhouse. I sort of just see... I don't see really the point of the Q5 currently in the market. But just just look at a core mojo and I see the kill count that can tally up on Dirty Buds, on Dank Pods videos for Christ's sakes. And then the BTR5. It is great if you're looking to be hip and much hipper than that person who's using a hip deck and haul around with the music all the way with you. It's a much more attractive design and houses many quirks and feature. But in terms of sound, it's just average. And if you're fine with an average sound, this will be the choice. And then the file Q3. This is actually my final pick. It's like the happy middle ground, as I said previously. It makes the most sense for me. It totally isn't perfect. I mean, look at that elegant setup I had earlier. Please have a separate charging port, please. <laughs> I have to say, it doesn't really quite hold the candle up against the hip deck, as its ability to power much powerful headphones and the sound signature is a lot less of a enjoyment, perhaps. But its ability to control the hissing on high sensitivity IEMs makes the deal. It isn't perfect, but it's good enough. And that's why I'm using it. Oh my god. This, this took way longer than it should. Thank you very much. I did really spend quite a lot of time writing the script. and It's a hard video to film. It's so long. So please, subscribe. If you, if you like what you've seen. I am ashamed of myself. But do it, please. Anyways. That's the end of part three. The final part of this, can you feel the heat? And bye bye. Oh my god, this is awkward. Is that the end of the end cards? That's about time for the end of end cards, right? Right?